Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, the Byron Nelson, the AT&T Byron Nelson. AT&T really fucked that one up when they put that into the name because everyone just calls it the Byron Nelson. You need to go, like producer Paul pointed out, like the Wells Fargo Championship show because people just call it the Wells Fargo. Good branding. AT&T Byron Nelson, not so hot. I feel like who's MasterCard and Bay Hill, I think, kind of fall under the same They do, but like, but like RBC Heritage, everyone calls it RBC Heritage. Yeah. It's strange. I don't know. Maybe you have to like run test groups on this to figure out what works. Anyway, we're going to be talking about the Byron Nelson a little bit on the PGA. And I do need to remind everyone out there that if you want to get into a draw for 20 DK bucks, all you need to do, smash the like button to the episode, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section. And what do you think, Jeff? Favorite play from beyond 100 to 1? Because we now have CT Pan, Corey Connors, and Max Hama coming in at deep odds, winning over the past month. Yeah. It's been a run. Usually we Nothing like, here. No, 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 nothing here. <laughs> Big zeros across the board for us. Uh, but we'll get to some... People had a really good week uh, on DraftKings. Uh, at least was, viewers of the show. Homa was as big an outright, I guess long though. Long was like 500. Yeah. But but I, I didn't know anyone that bet that. I, I, two people popped up in my mentions with betting slips on Max Homa. One at 300 to one and one at 420 to one. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's pretty spicy. Yeah. But people like Max Homa. Like even like him and Gup go back and forth on Twitter, donating money to charity. He's been a popular sleeper at different events. It just feels like people were off of him this week. Yeah, he does a lot of AMAs. He's a Twitter favorite. Yeah. Uh, so shout out to Max. Self-deprecating. I was cheering for him. So after all my, I was like, come on, Casey, let's make a run here. And then like yeah. that wasn't happening. We'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. I got some giveaways too. If you want to leave a rate, review, subscribe to the iTunes podcast, five stars up the nice DraftKings handle, there's another way that you can get into the Draw for 20 DK bucks. Uh, first off, Fantasy National. If you wait, and normally I say go like sign up and become a member right now, but if you wait until Wednesday to sign up and you get like a weekly membership, you get the old two for one because it brings you Wednesday to Wednesday. So you would be able to make all your lineups and do all your research for Byron Nelson. And then you would get the next seven days through the following Wednesday for the PGA Championship. So Wednesday, people, is when you want to go to fantasynational.com and become a m- member. You know, there's a million dollars up for grabs. On DraftKings, that's something fun. You can use it to run your betting models. Everything like that. So fantasynational.com. Go check that out. And the PME Open for the Byron Nelson. AT&T Byron. I was going to say Byron Nelson Classic. The Byron Nelson. It's in the description of this video and podcast and in the comment section. Click on the link. $15 to enter. Three max entry. And we need to fill it up so we get a nice juicy one for the PGA Championship. Based on the results of the past few weeks of the PME Open, it's it's filled. This hasn't filled very quickly. That I have my doubts that we're going to get to around 100 k Jeff. I don't think that money is going to be guaranteed. If it was me, I wouldn't guarantee it at this point. People have really cooled. Best tournament on DraftKings. No one wants to play in it. You play in it. We'll see next week if people have actually really cooled. I, the tournament's going to be smaller. It should fill pretty quickly. Like it's not like it, we're not going to get the ten thousand person entry. I'm going to make sure it stays at fifteen bucks. I didn't like that it was ten bucks for the Masters. It's but. never not filled. No, it's filled every single week. But when you're hanging double the size of a tournament out there and guaranteeing double the money, you want to make sure it fills. At least I get it from their end. I'm not putting up any of the money. They're putting up all the money. If I was them, I would want to make sure that it fills. You know what I mean? No one can see you nod. I need an elastic in my hair or something, like a bra strap or something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, some winners, though. Viewers of the show uh, who are not me or you and members of FantasyNational.com had some good weeks. There's like a long list here, and I like to give the shout-outs where the shout-outs are due. So Jimmy with a J turned 48 into 520. Felix Alvarado won his first GPP, good for 600 bucks. Sarch, Sart Trading hit Hamet 420 to 1 and a 100 to 1 top 5. It's a nice payday. Brian Rodriguez also hit Hama at 300 to 1. Lee Undergetz turned $393 on DraftKings into $9,450. That's the big winner of the week. Jeff Lecron turned 96 into 350 uh, Our boy, Riku. I feel like I'm still I'm, again. I feel like I'm still fucking up his name, but he, yeah, he won again. It wasn't an outright winner this week, uh, but he came six in the $350 three max. Good for 2K. Dan 1307 was in for 15, out for 100. That's a nice payday. Kyle Scott won his first GPP. Good for $5,000. Steve Linder in for 200 and 
$23 out for $5,200. T-Fed in for $1,000 out for $8,000. Matt Miller won his first GPP, turned 20, 25 cent entry into 10 bucks. Doesn't sound like much. Consider that ROI. Like, if you're playing 25 cent entries, like your bankroll is very small, now you got 10 bucks. That's huge. That's, mm-hmm. that's like playing you know, the 200 bucks a week and winning like 5K kind of thing. So that's a great way to build your bankroll. Shout out to Matt Miller. Dan Insinga uh, was in for 400, out for 2,800. Winners this week, man. Pink. He's been around for a while. Dave uh, won his first big GPP. Uh, he put in 100 bucks and cashed out around 5,500. Robert Record, he won $6,500 after watching the UFC show with Paul and Cody. And on Saturday, he won $6,500 on UFC. The next day, he turns around, wins $3,450 on PGA as well. It's a good weekend. Scoring big time in two separate DraftKings sports. Uh, Ryan played 20 bucks, took out 100 with a 5 of 6 lineup. And Silas Van Sky is inching ever so closely to a big GPP win in that $5. He had a 5 of 6 lineup uh, here, and he had a 5 of 6 lineup at the Heritage, and he won 300 bucks in both uh, each time, came inside the top 50 in both. You know, you have that extra guy, you're winning. So he just needs to get a six of six. And like, if I had to bet on who was going to win the $5 this week, you'd have to give everyone like 10,000 to one odds. But he'd be my bet. He's lingering right around. His picks are solid right now. My picks suck. They all lingered like in the cut line. But the Ann and Woodland situations really buried me. Yeah, so Holmes withdrew. I had Holmes. Sam Burns withdrew. So I, was, I, I was snickering when those ones happened. I, I, I had both <laughs> those guys. I had An, who obviously withdrew. I didn't have Gary Woodlands. So that was the only one I was like, yes, finally, something's breaking. Yeah. My, my best lineup was a five of six that had J.B. Holmes in it. I was like, oh, fuck, man. Like, I don't come know. on. But we've all been there. Like, you see the withdrawal, and you know, like, your ownership is zero or something that is, like, hey, you're, so. You're fired up. You're, like, snickering into your early coffee, like, you know, your proverbial coffee. I certainly don't drink. Uh yeah, and I don't know. So then I snicker, and then I got a couple of late Sunday ones. And The, the best is, know. like, when it happens, and then people get really triggered. They're like, well, the draft can do something about this. Like, it's part of the game. Like, fuck off. Yeah, no. Like, y- you made a bad pick. I made a series of poor choices and had guys withdraw on me. It's, yeah, it's it all, happens. all part of it. Like, guys get hurt, like, on the first carry of a, of a football game. You, something happens. I don't know. It's no different. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. So the winners of the 20K bucks from last week, Dub V22, Zach R013, Dodzy123, Tyler T47, Gilm14, Auburn Vet12, Too Tall22, and KV underscore Smooth was the winner from the UFC show from last week. Let's talk a little bit about the Wells Fargo. I watch, I was getting, I'm not going to lie to you, Jeff. I was getting pretty fired up. Patrick Reed had it to minus nine on Saturday through eight holes, and it was like, all right, Patrick Reed's going to do this. I have no worries that he's going to come back and beat Duffner <laughs> and Damon and Max Hama. No big deal. Proceeds to put the next shot into the water and then doesn't make another birdie for 30 hours. So that didn't turn out well for old Patty Reed. Yeah, and you got a little backwards. He actually had it minus three, I want to say, through five. Had a 12-footer on six that he couldn't convert. Happens. Then we got the part. This is where I have to step away. You got the par five seventh and then the short drivable par four on, on eight. He, uh, bogey bogeys, both of them. Not and great. then he kind of never got that any, any swagger back. So, so disappointing, but I mean, sticking on Patrick Reed for a second, did you see signs of life that would encourage your thoughts that you had when we spoke last week, that maybe it is time to just be riding Riding him? Yeah, I don't know if this is the week for it, just based on this course. I know the field is a bit softer. I think I'm going to start targeting Patrick Reed on some of the more difficult courses because that is where he shows up more often than not. Beth Page? Yeah, Beth Page. Like, Beth Page, I'll probably end up on Reed, I think. We'll talk about the PGA here in a second, some of the early odds. But I I did like what I saw. It worries me. But when you catch Patrick Reed on, like, a heater week, everything's going great for him. It was nice to see... It had been a while since, you know, he'd been bad, 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 bad. Now he's swinging back. Now he's pretty good again. Uh, he's making putts. He's scrambling well. Like, the irons were okay. He still can't drive the ball to save his fucking life. But one week he will. But he was averaging over, like, 300 off the tee. That was really encouraging to see. So I I, I got what I wanted out of Patrick. I mean, I would prefer he won, obviously, and not melt down on Sunday and shoot three over and, like, scumbag all my DK lineups. But yeah, it was still pretty good. Um, a lot of people were like, Patrick Reed, he's terrible. He's not even going to make the cut. And like, he was in it until midway through Saturday. 
So these longer, difficult courses, Patrick Reed can show up and compete. That's what I like to see. Like that hasn't gone away. So you crank up the, it's almost like we say like Brennan Grace, like if it's like a hard course or it's windy out, bet Brennan Grace. Patrick Reed, I think it's just, if it's a long, hard course where driving distance didn't turn out to be as big of a factor last week as maybe we had thought going into the week that, you know, I, I can see that playing itself out at Beth Page too, where it's not just going to be ultra bombers everywhere. Early reports are really wet. This week. At Beth Page. I mean, that would make sense. I mean, we, we live in the same area of the world and all it does is rain here now really wet i don't know and someone on the grounds crew's been i don't know was tweeting at me you got bucks letting us know that like it's really wet he's advising bombers but it's easy it's like it's uh, people pop up in my mentions all the time with their tips i don't know who to believe and who not to believe because people are just saying stuff half the time i don't know they use like fancy names for like grass growing and you know i i have can, access to thesaurus.com too <laughs> hey if that was the case you just believe everything cuss said ergon ergonomy what is it like ergonomics is like a type of like chair isn't it like an ergonomic chair never mind y- you need some energy me you're talking under your breath i don't even think no I, I i'm just i didn't I didn't know the exact words, so I'm saying it into a microphone. Everyone listening could hear it anyway, but I'm not trying to like embarrass myself by butchering it that badly. No, but y- y- if you're going to go for it, go all in with it. I don't know, whatever they, the, 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 the fancy name for the grass growers. Okay, so it's, so it's going to be wet. Yeah, it's supposed to be soaking. Cancel the tournament. More. If you don't drive it at least 340, you can't play. Like it probably provides a good opportunity for guys who are good with long irons and hit it in the middle of the fairway every single time. Like what I'm curious more to know, not that it's wet, not that it's not wet. It's like, what's the rough length going to look like for a PGA championship at Beth page versus like a Barclays at Beth page or a U.S. open at or Beth even page. the Ryder cup at Beth page. So that would be like, I know the US open. what, what is the, what you're right. I'm trying to remember if they've already played the Ryder cup there. I know they're going back there though. In a, in a couple years. I don't know. This, see, if you're going to bring it up, you should have looked at it. One thing I did notice, though, because, yeah, we'll get there when we get there, actually. Just bring it up. Yeah, you're, you're, you're scatterbrained here. Just fucking say it. No, get there when we get there. <laughs> Are you going to remember to say it? Yeah, because it's in my notes. You have notes? I always have a couple things that I don't want to forget bringing up. All right, anything else about Wells Fargo? Rory melting down again on Sunday? Strange. It's a hard course that you sort of miss your spots, but he's like three putting from 12 feet. He's got a 12 footer for birdie that you, he like hits it and you're like, oh man, it's going to happen. And then he three putts this. And I want to say that was on Saturday. Um, so that, that looked- was the one where going in, cause it was right before the weather delay. I forget who it was on the broadcast who said that if Rory makes this putt, he's going to win this tournament. And then he came back and three putted. That was on the broadcast. That was on the broadcast. The other part of it is, I think we all expected those guys to come back. In the end, I don't know. What, I mean, what it would have taken a lot for Rory, Rose, any of those guys to catch the number that Max finished. But he couldn't miss a putt. But I'm just so they they he, he gained ten strokes putting well, for the week. Like the, you're gonna win if you yeah. gain ten strokes putting. Like he he made it impossible for anyone to catch him. Didn't find much trouble either. No, no, he put himself into, like, he, he had, a, like, a fantastic week, obviously. But you generally, when you have one of those tee to green weeks that are, like, really good, he gained seven and a half strokes tee to green, put himself into favorable positions, nothing terrible. Usually, you gain, like, like if he, let's say he just had a good putting week, and he gained four strokes putting. All of a sudden, he's back with everyone in that pack at, like, 11 and 10 under. That It was yeah. really him hitting every six-foot putt that was the difference for him this week. So, good on him. And they were missing them. Yeah, they were. We, 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 we scouted that part out properly. The, the missed short putts. Poor Duffner, man. He had it rolling, then he got Andercursed. Then, then the Kentucky Derby got Andercursed. Yeah. Just a big week for the curse. Huge week for the curse. Although, am I incur- like, does it count? Because people were throwing it back at me because he's hitting up us and our Menchies unsolicited, letting us know how great Duffner's playing, yada, yada, yada. And then I'm just like, well, why don't you go ahead and, and just call it? Which precedes him to call it. So, I don't know. I don't know if those are full curses. When are, he's he he wants to talk a big yeah. game. He just didn't want it out there so he couldn't be ridiculed. The greatest thing about him also is, and listen, I'm not knocking any major championship, but he'll give anybody credit for their major. Like, Mike Weir could be in contention 
this week if he was playing. And he would say, oh, he's a former major champion. He's got it. <laughs> like, every time, like, somebody who once won a major, like, eons ago, he'll give, he'll always give them that. Now. Well, of course. Those are the only names that he knows. It was like when Keith Mitchell won. He'd never heard of the guy. But he, he says he follows he's golf like, pretty closely. Jason Duffer, he's a major champion. He's not going to fall apart. Like, what could it go wrong? Like, what? What? He did this to Duffner. The last time Duffner won was at Memorial in 2017, and Cust did the same thing. I think Duffner was up by, like, eight or something like that. And he called it over for Duffner, and then Duffner collapsed and came back. And then he said that Ricky was going to win, and then Duffner came back and won. And then he tried to claim credit for it. He can't do that. The Kentucky Derby one was on just... There's no chance this gets overturned. It's never happened at the Kentucky Derby. Like, 30 seconds later, overturned. Couldn't have yeah. enjoyed it more. Curse is hot. It's hot right now. And people have reminded me that his opinions of, of my beloved Chargers are right in this heater zone. 14 and 2. So now I've decided maybe they got to start like 2 and 6. And he <laughs> jumps off. He jumps off. He still off. hasn't jumped off poor Cameron Champ yet. We're Killed all, that guy's career. We're all waiting for that. <laughs> we are. Well, the, the week after he gives up on Champ, we have to be all in on Champ. That's when it's coming back for him. Ah, uh, yeah. Bad week for the curse, but most weeks are. Vote in the Custies, too. Hit the, the link is in the description. We need to get as many votes for the Custies as possible. We'll be filming that in like two, three weeks' time. Have it ready for like 4th of July weekend, that kind of thing. Uh, PGA Championship? I think... I said last week I like Tommy, and I still like Tommy. I'll see what he does. He's playing at the British Masters this week. Okay. Sergio kind of did it for me this week, though. I think I'm going to be in on Sergio. That's I'm seeing 50 to 1. Yeah. 40 to 1. Uh... I liked how he played About this About Tommy. He's not just playing the British Masters. He's like hosting he's the, host, yeah. the British Masters. So has no bearing. No, I'm not. I'm not like, I don't know. I, you tell me. Does that have a bearing? Should Probably. I be concerned? Tiger used to host tournaments all the time. He used to host like three a year. No, I don't know. I like, I think Tommy's game suits very much of what, of what will succeed at Beth Page. I think if it plays like U.S. Open style, I'll just always take Tommy at U.S. Opens. If this one's going to mimic a U.S. Open, then take Tommy. You wonder, if Sergio has his green jacket. Will that change the opinion of Beth Page uh, patrons? Because this is where they were counting his grip changes. I have no idea. Not, not a classy crowd at Beth Page. We saw that last year. What was, what was the one last year? The U.S. Open? What the hell was the name of that course? Shinnecock Hills? Yeah, yeah. yeah not, not real classy walking around there. No. Like ragged. Poor Poulter gets the brunt yeah. of it, too. Well, Feel bad for him. That's why people want... Uh, yeah, and Beth Page, ha I'm certain it has an upcoming Ryder Cup. And projecting captains, people want, like, Phil versus Poulter. That'd be great. For like, upstate New York. In, in, like, that in, in would that, be... In that sort of format, then go go crazy with it. Yeah. yeah like I mean, they're already in there. upstate New York. You may as well, like, throw Pol like blood in the water. Let Poulter be a captain. <laughs> I want to say we're talking 2022. Maybe it's one last grasp for Poulter to play in America, then. That, yeah. yeah. Maybe he could still be captain pick. He could, he could be the captain and pick himself. Then he can play. <laughs> but there's the move. Just make him captain, then he's guaranteed to be on the team. Uh, that also, I guess while we're talking PGA. Tommy, Sergio, Bryson, I think is where I'm at right now. And I mentioned Reed, too. And all those guys, like, start at 30 to 1, so I'm not too bummed out about it. No, I, and it would be hard. Tommy, I mean, that, that's one to watch, right? Because he's, like, a, a runaway favorite over there. Yeah, so if he doesn't win, you'll probably get better off. But if he does win, then that can hurt. But Sergio, like, the guy's not playing. I don't really see their numbers doing much although Sergio looks competent with the putter yeah, I, I could get behind that he's, my played, least, he's, he's also just played really well at that page over the years my least favorite narrative in all of of golf wagering is this um and it happens seemingly more with Brooks and I want to say with like Patrick Reed uh, like people now assume this whole thing, like Brent Chambly said something over the weekend. Oh no, no, really? Was it very insightful? But that's what I mean. That the only people that could possibly challenge Tiger Woods are Rory and Dustin. Okay. So everyone took that as like, uh, and Brooks, I think tweeted the article. So I was like, Oh God, to pound Brooks for the PGA now. I'm like a documented asshat just made a ridiculous comment and now Brooks Kepka's more motivated to win a major championship. 
because every player in the world isn't hyper motivated. The whole world is watching golf right now because it's you know Tiger won the the Masters. And I joked with you off air. I caught myself like last week giving um, talking in such hyperbole for my excitement for the PGA Championship. And I like caught myself rewatching because they were at Wells Fargo and Quail Hollow uh, that that Ric Flair intro from a couple years ago. I'm like, I'm so fired up for the PGA. Like, I can't wait for the PGA. The scheduling change is amazing for the PGA. And I take like a deep breath. It's just like, oh, wait, I only give a, f- a rat's ass because it's the first time we get to see Tiger again, baby. Off a major. First time we're going to see a lot of people coming off the Masters. Like, a lot of people just took this month off. Rory's played. Dustin played. Gagged Heritage. And we're seeing some of them come back this week. Like, some of the internationals. Like, this is the first time Beregard has played. Since oh, so we're going down there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sure. Hadn't really thought about him much. But, I don't know. I'd say Brooks at, like, 6, 7 to 1 this week is a much... I mean, like if he's ten to one next stra- week. Strangely enough, I have more confidence that he's going to win at Beth Page than win here. Well, that's. <laughs> I mean, I can't argue that because history tells us that that he is he wins majors. Yeah, yeah that would um, that would be the case. He should pick this place fucking part though. Do you have any interest in Hideki for for Beth Page in that thirty five forty to one range? It's kind of like I see him at thirty five. His speed has better odds than Hideki does, which is strange. I don't know. I haven't done the full deep dive yet. Just the the, the like name. hard U.S. Open type sure, course. Yeah, great. Guy. Yeah, I mean Hideki wins at like Phoenix. He never wins too. Well, he hasn't won since Phoenix two years ago. No, I want to say like two or two and a half years ago, he won like twice, like right at the start of the swing season, like a WGC and then something. He won else. Bridgestone a few years ago too. That might have been three years ago now. For all I, I think this off was was I think his last win was like an overseas WGC or like in Korea the week after. To be honest. Okay. Anyway, so ne- he didn't like immediately jump out. He jumps out more to me this week than he would next week. Put it that way. If I was going to go like take a Hideki number, I don't like the Hideki number this week, but oh, he has he's far more live here. I'm looking at my key stats for the week in the power rankings. He rates out number one across all time frames. Uh, with the way that you want to really attack this course. So that's interesting to know. You want to move on? Um, Do you have the thing written down that you wanted to get to? Yeah, I I kind of already, I kind of already got to it, but I'm really excited for next week. It seems like we're going to have like four co favorites. Yes. Uh, For the most part, Brooks is a little behind them, but I think when all the dust settles, Tiger will be alone at the top and, those other three, I think, will like pack in directly behind. Tiger, Dustin, Rory, and Brooks. Like, I gotta start trying to figure out like how I want to construct my DraftKings lineups, kind of thing. And pricing should be out on DraftKings sometime soon, probably Tuesday, I'm guessing. But I'm probably just gonna cross Rory right off. I don't think he's gonna win. But like, it's really hard to pick between Dustin and Brooks for me at this moment. I would lean Dustin. I, I feel like I always lean Dustin. Brooks actually gets it done. He's three times as many major wins. Yes, Dustin didn't even play well at the Masters. He lost by a stroke. Like, Brooks was at least playing pretty good for three and a half days. Brooks was just (laughs) trading birdies for bogeys all week. You know, Dustin didn't even do anything. He hit center greens and, like, two putt from 40 feet. Yeah, and then when those were the par fives, he, you know, got a putt for a birdie for three feet. And he hit those. And Sunday afternoon he was in it. He got real hot. Finally, he closing, finally got closing, hot. closing the round, and then he went to the Heritage and had a real disappointing Sunday. And a track that historically takes the guys at the very top and yeah, and dumps them out. If you were making the odds, like fair odds, where would you like Tiger's nine to one right now? What would be a fair odd for Tiger? Fourteen to one. Yeah, like, like nine I, to one seems a bit steep. Yes, but I. Yeah, nine to one is steep, but I don't know. Even any of them to me, a fair odd doesn't start under fourteen. Sure, in reality, but like, okay, let me fair. let me rephrase it then. Is Tiger actually the favorite for the U.S. Open? The PGA Championship. The PGA Championship. Yeah, sorry. No, he's one of the top five. Yeah, I could see why. I, I get where he is, where he is, but I would say no like what would you like i'm not holding you to either one of these bets but if you had to they told you you had to bet one to win the maximum amount of money possible would you bet tiger at nine to one or rose at 18 to one get double the odds on rose okay i would probably trade rose but there's I'm, other... I'm just looking at the guy that he's the only one at 18 to one so he's exactly double the odds of tiger woods see 
we did this before. I know, I, I and it it turned out to be incredibly foolish because Tiger won. We did this before. But Tiger's not going to win every major. I, I know, but we did this with Tiger versus Phil, and we died to double up Tiger at but, at Augusta. But it was triple up. It was triple up with Phil. And I just wouldn't bite. So I don't know. I'm not a Rose Brand guy. If I think someone's going to win that major, I'm I'm I, I would rather my money would be on Tiger. I like how Rose played this week. Yeah, especially with his like early week comments that his game is lost. He's fine. He couldn't drive it all that well. It was all approaches and putting with him. Dash and I feel like he lost, like the shirt was a little cleaner this week. Maybe it was the darker shade ones that are less abrasive to me. You just don't like him because he has too many sponsors. And his hat is so ugly. It's literally like Put that. Put it this way. Handsome isn't really on brand for Justin Rose. He's not Adam Scott. Not a real no. good-looking guy. No, but his hat literally. Who cares? That Morgan, you're already you're already not attractive. Who cares what you wear? That Morgan Stanley hat looks like it was literally done at, at the shop at like one of those stands that um, Tim walks by in the mall. Yes, Tim was. Oh, I got a fun Tim story for you. Oh, okay, let's go. Tim bought a car. What? Yeah, it was a while ago, but he bought it from someone who had been deceased. Like it was like, like an 80 year old man died and they were selling his car off. So Tim bought the car. So there was like leftover sunglasses no, no. and hats and a cane in the back. So now Tim wears the sunglasses and the hats <laughs> and all the stuff is still in the back of the car. But he probably really likes the style. He thinks it's great. He thinks it's great. <laughs> if there's anything you ever needed to know about Tim, it's that. That basically sums up the entire thing. And he's very triggered about Wendy's getting back in the Twitter game. No, but he's also like, no, you guys don't get it. This guy had great, like, he thinks this 80-year-old had premium style. Oh, of course. <laughs> like, <laughs> lowest of the low, like, snapback hats. Like, snapback hats from before snapbacks went out of style and came back into style again. So we're talking about Tiger. Um, he has his yacht there. Yeah, his yacht's there. I prefer to pronounce it yacht. How it's spelled. Like what are they posting like Fowler and Rom at for next? The twenties? Yeah. Twenty for uh, each. Rom, Rom's twenty. Fowler's twenty. Bryson's twenty-eight. Xander's twenty-five. Do we just say fuck it and bet Xander? He's gonna win one of these, isn't he? Oh, uh, he's always around. Bryson. Last time we saw Bryson, the the shots, the irons, and the approaches were on. He like was the worst putter, right? Wasn't he seventh at like strokes approach, uh, gained approach at Heritage? I can look that up for you. I don't actually recall. To tell you the truth. I just remember he missed the cut, didn't he? Yeah, he did miss the cut. That's what made it that, like, he literally went full Ben Ann, except Ben Ann, you know, would hold a cut. Are we worried about Ben Ann's injury? His neck, his neck injury? Yes or I, yes I, or no? I'm not really sure, but I'm sorry. I'm, I want. Yeah, you you actually are inc see, incredibly correct. Uh, he gained five strokes tee to green in two rounds and lost six strokes putting. That's a great sign. That is a good sign. I, I would tend to agree with that. There, when we have a guy coming up for this week that fits exactly that mold at a very good price for the Byron Nelson. Okay. I, okay. So let's, any, any final thoughts on the, uh, Jason Duffner? No, I, I wasn't. going to win the PGA Championship? He could be a two-time PGA Championship winner? No. I didn't. Yeah, him and Keegan winning back-to-back -back was pretty random. Well, Keegan lost in the playoff to him, too, which is the craziest part. So oh, yeah, the year before. And every year, like, I have to do these article or write-up for the major, and I'll, I don't know, I'll pick, like, Dustin, and I'll pretty much use the line, like, I forbid to allow Dustin to live in the same world with the same amount of majors as, like, every, all these other guys with one. Todd Hamilton? Ring, ring him off. Weir, Keegan. Sean McKeel. The real off. deal. Like, did, did McKeel win one? Yeah, he won a PGA Championship, I think. Rich Beam. Yeah. Beam Beema. Byron Nelson. Uh, Trinity Forest is the course. Second time here? Second time here. The last, uh, apparently, it's very wet in Dallas again, too. We might get another weather delay. There was a four-hour weather delay during the final round last year. But we're looking at the yardage is up for debate because everywhere says something different. I just looked at last year's scorecard, 7,380 yards, par 71. Bermuda grass, it has its own proprietary grass for the tee boxes and, and fairways. It's like Trinity Zazoya, which is kind of funny. Uh, you can take advantage of the par fives. It's a completely open course. There's no rough. There's like waste areas because it's built on a former dump, but 
you guys are like, if you're not hitting the fairway here, you might be in a bunker. There's 85 bunkers scattered across the ground. There's no water to speak of. And if it's going to be wet, it's basically just take out your driver and smack it as far as you can and figure it out from there. These greens are gigantic. The fairways are, I've heard, are gigantic. Yeah, like there's no it's like, a, like you said, it's like a wasteland and there's nothing to... It, it's American-style links is how they describe it, but it's hard to get American-style links. Like it's not... It can be really windy because there's no trees around. So if the wind does pick up, it does give the course sort of a defense, sort of like Aaron Hills was in that sense, except for Aaron Hills, if they hadn't expanded the fairways, the rough still would have been fine. But if the wind doesn't pick up, like you're going to see a winner like below minus 20. Why is one at 23 under last year? Yeah. It's going to be a birdie fest. So that brings a lot of players into the realm of potentially winning. Like, even when we look back at last year, like, I remember you and I both had Grace and Leishman. I think they came second and third. Great. They had the bad round. Wise ended up running away with it towards the end. But, like, Ryan Blom popped up. JJ Spawn popped up. Killa Keith. When we first got, like, a good good mention of Killa Keith, he was T3. And he was he and Wise were the both like the ball striking guys that really came through. I don't know. I'm it's a really weak field, so it's it's tough to think of. But if we go to the top, Brooks is the favorite. He's six and a half to one. Hideki's sixteen to one. Spieth's eighteen to one. Stenson's twenty two. Uh, Wise is twenty five. Leishman's twenty eight. Then you have like Grace at thirty, Reed at thirty, and that's really it. Uh, the guy that I was talking about earlier. Uh, I caught him at 25 to one before it all dropped, but Stenson, Stenson has been just dialed in with his irons over the, like the past four events. He's not driving the ball particularly well, but it's hard to get into too much trouble here. Those irons persist. He's not going to lose four and a half strokes putting again this week. Like that's what did him in this week. The guy legit couldn't make a putt. These are very slow greens, which really cuts down on the three putt percentage, uh, even though the greens are absolutely massive. And I do think it does decrease the emphasis on short game only to the fact that these are 13,000 square foot greens that you're just going to be on the green. Like the green regulation percentage is like 80%. So you're probably not going to have to get out the wedge and chip it, bump and run it or chip it up or do whatever this week. So uh, if you can lag putt pretty decently, judge your speeds well, as long as you're locked in with your irons and driving the ball okay, I I think you're live. Do you need a guy that can like, does he need to have like a birdie party track record? Uh, Maybe. Potentially so. I mean, are you going to say like Stenson's not a birdie guy? No, I'm, I'm. Listen, against this field on this course, Henrik Stenson can, all these guys can become birdie guys. I, I would think that if you're going to look for like, quote unquote, a birdie guy, that's where you want to like scout your long shots from. Like everyone at the top is going to be good here. Hideki rates out the best statistically for me. Brooks should theoretically just mash this yeah, place, but right? ha- how into it is he really going to be? It's, it, I don't like to project that onto anyone because it's completely unknowable, but he, he's showing up to play. So obviously he wants to win, but. I don't know. I could see him checking out. <laughs> Can't you? Yeah. And I don't know why Spieth is 18 to 1. but he I mean, is. as we said before, even like just historically in recent memory, who's been winning the week before the majors? Like who's the best player to bring something home? Sometimes without can't like the Scottish is an anomaly because a lot of like really good players. But even then, you don't. Tip- We've had like Rafa and Ricky and Phil. Phil. So there have been some good Br- like Brandon Stone last year. Yeah, I mean, I guess historically, like, Houston is was the one before the Masters. We saw Poulter win it, but that was, like, a rejuvenating Poulter. It wasn't like... He had to win to get into the Masters. I'm not... I'm just saying, like, my perception is, like, these guys... The, my perception is reality, it feels, with these guys. But again, Brooks and Hideki can just slay this place. Why is it 25 is... It's a bit uh, short, but I feel like we had this conversation last year coming wow. off the T2 at Wells Fargo. I was like, why is it a bit short at like 30 to 1? And then we didn't bet him, and then he won. But almost like we – I feel like we even spoke about this last week is like he was 66, 70 to 1, 75 to 1 last week. I tried to take my chance knowing that – He played well too. Yeah, knowing that this number was coming this week. I was trying to just get ahead of it. And, yeah, I obviously didn't play well enough. Uh, you know, too many e- weekend even par – uh, okay. Stenson. Like, do the Leishman, Grace, Reed tier, do they intrigue you? Because I went with Stenson, and then I'm just dropping down. Yeah, that would make sense. I don't know. Leishman, maybe out of all those guys. 
He was. The, I feel like he was the first round lead. He shot ten under in the first. I round. I feel like year. Lynx American just sounds maybe it's like an Australian kind of course. I mean, it's Texas. <laughs> you always always look at the if it gets windy, you want to you want to search out the Aussies in Texas. But um, I don't know these, these odds don't really <laughs> like they're fair odds for the Leishman Grace and Reed tier being thirty to one in a field this week. And Brooks is helping some of these numbers near the top, obviously. But I don't, I, I don't have a whole bunch of confidence in those guys right now. I was looking at like. It's hard to glean too much because it's only been here one year. But looking at the leaderboard, uh, I found that like Silverado and Waste Management had a decent corollary to like the ball striking aspects of it. But if you look at the RSM leaderboard from Sea Island, just a lot of guys that played well there played well here. Like Ryan Blom, for example. Like they're the only two courses that he ever plays well at. So I found that to be somewhat surprising. I don't know what it means. It could mean nothing. It could just be absolute noise. But you know, when I was digging into the stuff, this is what I found. I could, um, before we go deeper, just your opinion on Spieth? Yeah, I mean, not at 18-1. to 1. I think he's like 10-4 on DraftKings or something like that, too. No thanks. This could be like one of the events where he does get it done, though. Like well, if, this was... because In our Tiger versus Spieth bet, which yes, is winning. Yes, which I actually didn't even remember till after we recorded last week. We did make that bet. Happy to make it. I would argue I'm, like, guaranteed to push. <laughs> Like, there's no way Spies winning two. Oh, no, see, I, I, I disagree. Guaranteed to oh, push. like, once he gets hot, I think like he, I he think goes. if he gets one, like, we've seen Spieth do this. Once he gets one, he, like, parlays that into, like, three in a row. I'm kind of... he just gets out of this world hot. I, I'm kind of worried this could be a good spot for him, but I was kind of felt that way a couple weeks ago somewhere, and he L- sucked. Listen, if I, I... I do think that if we just, like, play buckets of players, like, skill sets, upside, that sort of thing, Reed and Spieth are in the same bucket that... There would be no way in hell that I would bet Spieth at 18 to 1 with Reed out there at 30. Well, we used to like do that joke when Reed was still like not good and Spieth was really good that like we got to be betting Reed at 80 when Spieth is like 20 before Spieth became like yeah, out of this world. The wonder, you know, the the golden child. Um and I hate to have to go back here, but Tiger's schedule Outside of majors and WGCs, like outside of the Memorial, could you think of like anything he's going to play or he's strict like it's all like, yeah. WGCs, Memorial, and ma- yeah. majors. That's it. Why would you? It doesn't have to, but yeah, that's so we're real. But I got my win at the Masters. Maybe you can get another one too. Yeah. Why not? And then I was thinking yesterday, like players that have won in the last two years, because it's been a year and a half and the events that they've won. I mean, his players and... Tour championship wins. Who? Tiger. The Masters. Sorry. Not Masters and Tour Championship win. And also like Phil, funny enough, has won in each of the last two years with Mexico and and Frankie. And, and but not as many players as people would think. What uh, multiple wins? Who have already won this year, who had a win last year. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> we haven't seen Pat and Kazire win this year. Yeah, we haven't seen Brooks win. Brooks won CJ Cup. It wasn't it's this season, but it's not. I mean, Dustin won in um, Middle East. Me- Mexico. And, and, and he won Middle East and Mexico. He's yeah. won twice. So I guess right. if you want to give Rom his uh, half win. Yeah, Rom got a half win, and he won the hero. Two halves. He got two halves. He's got, he's got a full one. So the second tier of guys, I think this is where it gets really intriguing. I, the, I, I would guess the winner comes out of here. So we have Killa Keith, T3 last year. Hasn't qualified for the U.S. Open. Well, this could be the week he does. He's 35 to 1. Na and M are both 40. Rafa, Charles Howell the third, and Ryan Moore at 45. Scotty Scheffler coming off a playoff loss on the web.com tour. Four consecutive top sevens on the web, by the way, and 20th at Valera for Scotty's 50 to 1. Shop that. I've seen it. All right, if you better. if you see that better. So that that's like But wow. you have Scheffler. He's in the same boat here at 50 to 1 as Norin. Olison, Sabatini, Thomas Peters, yeah. Lucas Beregard, Scott Piercy. Crazy, right? That's an interesting tier of guys. He's even ahead of guys that have uh, Paul Maroff is half win. Back in Texas. Um, yeah, I don't mind this range at all. Uh, so I love Rafa. Rafa rates out really well. I like the way that Rafa's playing. He keeps gaining ball striking, whether it's off the tee, whether it's on approaches. I think that the de-emphasization of short game. Yeah. He doesn't have greenside bunkers that exactly. he's got. It's just like 60-yard putts that he's got a lag to four feet. Yeah. Or sorry, 60-footers yeah, that he's got a... That. Yeah, okay. So I'm in. 45 to 1, I'm in. Yeah. I, I mean, just hit to me, you know how much I like Rafa. His name surrounded by those does stick out to me. 
I'm kind Thomas of, Peters is also. When was the last time like he did anything though? He's. I feel, handle, like, I feel like he just like plays well for two rounds on the Euro Tour and melts. Well, down. that's what I was gonna say. He's been around for uh, has some nice early round European scores. Last we saw him, I think he had a great new club break. Oh, he launched his driver. Good. See, I'm in. I'm in for that. <laughs> yeah. Literally, like threw it one handed off the tee box. Uh, he does anything for you? No, probably not. No, like I, I would much rather go to Beauregard. Like if this is going to be a course where minus twenty five could potentially be the winning score, you know that there's a if he's go, going on that path to winning, you know that Beauregard can go fire a sixty two. One of these days, well, just gets super so unconscious. Do hot. you just not like put Thunder Bear in that exact? Same conversation of... of Not, I, I mean, I just like the way the Paragard has played better over the past 18 months than Olsen. Olsen had a good Masters, but he hasn't really done much else. Uh, Team Sabatini, ride or die? Not, I mean, 50 to 1. That's, I'm, just, I'm, I'm making that comment as in, like, there is Team Sabatini, and they're finally got to swallow the number. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Are you? No, I've never bet him. So the only other one from this range that I really like, I like Trey Mullenix. He's down to 70. I grabbed him at 80. 80. 80. 80. With the each way. I we're like on it, we were on it at like 100 last week. With the, just, just knocking off the names makes it feel like you got to go back. And he, he like rallied to make the cut. He was second in strokes gained approach this like last week, which is incredible. He gained right. seven strokes on approach. He just no short game, couldn't putt. Classic Trey Mullenix, but... If this is going to be one of these situations where you can just grab driver, bomb it out there, and he's on the sh yeah, he's on the short list. So yeah, be be on Trey Mullenix here. Uh, where is Joel Damon this week? He withdrew, didn't he? He's not playing. Him and Johnny Vegas are both not playing. They could both win this event. I was so excited to write. I even wrote down Damon and Vegas's name to write up my column, and not in the field. So what would Damon's fifty? What would his FRL be? Oh God, like eight ten, ten to one. He'd be Tiger Woods. He's the Tiger Woods of first rounds. <laughs> He's like, I don't know how I missed that one last week. Because I usually bet Damon first round yeah. later. And who would he tie Max, right? Or Rory? No, Damon. It was Damon and Rory, I want to say. Was it Damon and Rory or Damon and Duffner? No, Duffner, Duffner didn't show up till the second round. That's right. Um, sticking in this under 100, but high. Fratelli in Texas. Are we just going to mention all the Texas guys? And like okay, do you want to do you want to give me a best ball? If I get Fratelli and Hostler, and you get Spieth. Do I get Spieth and Scheffler? No, I I oh, okay. I get a Texas best ball. I, I told you I didn't want to bet Spieth. <laughs> okay. Uh, any love for that not long hitting yet accurate Seamus Power? He had a good week. <laughs> I wasn't following. I think I was in a dentist chair, but my phone was blowing up. He had a first round lead at some point. And then he double bogeyed 18. <laughs> Other than having him on like, I didn't bet him. I didn't bet him. Not that I, I should have. Like, it's kind of crazy to me that he's 70 to one. Seamus Power is 70 to one. Abraham answers 75 to one. I know Abe hasn't been playing well. It's a Holland on Texas event. He's, he's great off the tee. Like... I, I don't but does great off the tee matter here? Yeah. I mean, everyone who basically popped up inside the top 10 last year was great off the tee. But didn't we already decide that it's hard to, like, be in a bad position off the tee? Getting it out there and getting to the right spot is still pretty critical. And if it's as wet as some people claim that it is, I, I doubt it's going to be like, you're going to get no rule. But if it does pick up, like, guys can hit it like 350 out here. I'm happy to announce Scott Stallings' form from the weekend at the Zurich continued through last week. And if we look, Pat Perez is 66 to 1. Hmm. That's interesting. Jimmy Walker in Texas at 90 to 1. He was sixth year last year, too. This is just, this field's so bad that it's just, he was like really in it, and he hit a he had a crucial like OB shot. He had an ugly shank last year. I want to say when he was right in the mix. I don't know. I like Mullenix the best of those guys, and like he wasn't really in it. He finished at fifteen under, and why is one at twenty three? I, I mean, you're hyping up the uh, the beer beer garden, but no love for Harding at seventy. I mean, I just feel like Lucas Berger is a substantially better player. Like Harding had a good Masters, he'll be invited back to Augusta and next year. But outside of that, what's he ever really done? 
He's one well, of Well, he's not of- the reason that that I mean Grace was the one that imploded. What? He was on fire at the Zurich. Who? Harding? Yeah. Okay. Didn't, didn't bet Harding. I'm just I like to bounce things off you. I you like but to- you're making these definitive statements and then backing off of them. No, I said that you like Beer Garden, but Harding. I didn't has... even say I liked Beer Garden. I, I never said I was betting him. Brought him up. Doing you brought what him you up do. as a guy that could could, of could those run the bir- one guys, and that could sure. run a birdie heater. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Didn't Happy Barnett tear his ACL? What? Where'd you hear that? I didn't hear it. Maybe you could be right. That never. Know. He's playing, so I'm wrong. He played at the Masters. Played all right. All right. Last I thought week, he was hurt. Last week, if we just look at the strokes gained approach of the guys in the field this week, Mullenix was the best. Rory was actually the best, but Mullenix was the best. Stenson, Stephanie, Shank, Perez, Matt Hama, Nate Lashley. Those were your best in strokes gained approach last week. Any of those names do anything for you? Besides Mullenix? Steele gained almost eight strokes off the tee last week. Lost almost five on approach, but I mentioned Silverado. I mentioned Phoenix as potential ball striking courses that are somewhat similar. He's won. He hasn't won at Phoenix, but he's played well historically at Phoenix. He won at Silverado twice. So I thought that he was an interesting long shot. I, I don't really know what to do from the bottom end here. I got I got Stenson. I got Rafa. I got Fertelli. Oh, you not, like Fertelli? Uh, uh, Mullenix, sorry. <laughs> I don't hate. Stenson, uh, I don't. Rafa, I actually Fertelli. don't hate Fertelli this week. So yeah, Stenson, Mullenix, and Rafa. Those are the three that I that yeah. I have in right now. But I, all, I got Rafa. All, all these long shots keep winning, and we don't have one yet. Sun Kang is a player in this field. Continue. Uh, does he he hits it out there? You liked him last week, or yeah. not? Yeah, you. Yeah, he thought impl- he he imploded for me coming down the stretch. He was like five over on the back nine on Friday. <sighs> Like the long shot dust. We haven't even got to long shots yet. We're still in this like 75 range. Okay, so I'm going to just drop a little below so we're gonna... 75 so you could throw shade at Ryan Palmer. I don't hate Ryan Palmer. There's no water on this course. That's and, a that's a bonus. And he, re- there were moments where he really carried that team last week. Or at the... Uh... I might bet Keith Mitchell. I'll just say, fuck it. 35 to 1, I don't care. I think he has a good chance of winning this week. I, he played really good at, at Wells Fargo. Yeah. We finished minus seven or eight. He finished T8. You he know, t- I he wish tied with here. Rory. I wish Vegas was here. I just said that. <laughs> You're not even listening to me today, are you? I'm, I'm listening. You sure? Yes. Like, where's Kokrak this week? Uh, Kokrak, Kokrak would be like 20 to one. Would Kok- you be able to, would you, could you handle that? No. Im Moore. JJ Spawn had a great finish here last year. He did. You know, he played like the was it last week he played surprisingly okay, or was that Heritage he played okay? Probably Heritage. Yeah, I'm I'm not on. We had <coughs> uh, Spawn last year. He was playing pretty well. Just by the by the numbers, there's a whole bunch of holes on this course that are 400 to 450 yards. Uh Harris English, your boy. He's out there. But actually, one to look at. JT posted. He is second from that range. I feel like the show is just going downhill very quickly. It's the worst show we've done all year. Why? Uh, I've got nothing to say. I feel like this happened at the before master. Like we, I don't know. This field sucks. Long shots then? Well, we started there with with Poston. I don't know. Is he super motivated? I always like betting guys who are like really good friends with the guy that just won, right? It's a great narrative. It, isn't Not everyone really. friends with Max Alma? Is Max Alma actually going to play this week? No, he withdrew. Oh, he withdrew? Yeah. Okay. Too much partying. I can see that. I, I would be in a very similar boat. I I mean, 100 to 1. Poston's interesting. Who else rates out okay here? That Troy Merritt rates out really well. Nate Lashley rates out really well. He's 200 to 1. The Bod, Hank Laboidia. Is this the what Texas? Uh, doesn't uh, Party Marty do well in Texas? Or that's strictly Valero? I think that's strictly Valero. He was playing well last week, too, for a bit. Like, I got nothing from down here. Straka, 
275 to 1. Carlos Ortiz, maybe he can reclaim the mantle of good Ortiz at 300 to 1. But now it feels like I'm searching. I don't know. I'm, I'm chasing, like, I, missing like, a long like, shot, and Brooks is going to win by 80 strokes. Peter Uline, 200 to 1. That's your bet? I would take Konos before him. Who? Jim Konos. I had him last week. He came like 14th or something. He's always around day one. He's a first. He's an auto first round leader bet. I don't know. Do you think if you guys right under the hundred that 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 I don't mind potentially, like uh, Kyung Hoon or Kevin Tway? Really, Tway? Why? Just crush it out there for you. Okay. Hit you those greens. I'm just. I don't We've had such random freaking winners right now, like you said. Now you're almost like trying to like force, like who, which random card could get pulled next. So if we look at birdies or better gained over the past 24 rounds, Wyndham Clark is actually the best. Then it's Sungjae, Palmer, Keith Mitchell, Brooks, Stallings, Badley, Ollie, Sloan, Straka, and Max Hama. Why wouldn't you be interested in Sung Jae? It seems like he's had a very similar number at, at harder fields. It has. I just, I don't know, maybe it's not just... not long enough? Maybe, yeah, he's long enough. Maybe just fatigue for me from, like, being on Sung Jae. It's not like the, the, he was 31st last week. Couldn't really drive it. Saved himself around the green. The irons weren't particularly sharp. But he seems to rate out really well from, you know, the birdies are better area. Um, he's not great at the key par four range where Rafa is around that same number. Like I didn't want to invest too much in this. I want to have some money for the PGA championship. Honestly, if you just went with your three guys, I wouldn't think that's too crazy either. Maybe, maybe in honor of you. No, cause I'm going to add Keith Mitchell. I'm going to bet Keith Mitchell. Well, you're going to add for telly. I was going to add for telly just for you. I want to be there with you when he finally breaks through. I hope to be there myself. He's not like I auto bet the guy. I'm just intrigued by him. And I'm, I'm excited for any Longhorn that can win where I could then say, like, he's the best Longhorn on tour. Oh, I mean, we already know Scotty Scheffler is. He might be. <laughs> what about Brian Stewart? Brian Stewart, in his past three measured events, Valspar, Valero, and Heritage, has not gained fewer than 4.3 strokes on approach, averaging around like 5.8 per event. And his ball striking was even on at Zurich, which is probably not accounted for. It's not accounted for. So he's he's hot right now. He's deep, deep down this list. Maybe he's like the dirt that I throw. This tournament fucking sucks, man. It's a shame because this used to be, um, you know, it's Byron Nelson. Just to have that sort of like Lord Byron would be there shaking your hand, much the same Arnie and, and Jack. It's probably for the best that that doesn't happen anymore. I'm going to assume that is not the case. Just pull up the skeleton and give you a high five. It needs to be real gentle well, so it does, the hand doesn't break off. I bet Rafa at 45 to 1. Okay. You can get a better price? 50? Oh. No, oh. now you're feeling bad. Yeah, when no, it's not enough for me to. You can't uh, cash it out. You're locked in at that price. That's not enough for me to like. You know, yeah, five points is five points. It's not like I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Bodog, Josh Perry pointed this out to me. Uh, Bodog last week. While they're not offering each ways, the top fives were essentially each ways. If you just bet them both, it's the first time they've done that. Okay. Just as to throw it out there. So for you people. can, instead of like hitting that each way button, just take. Okay, I actually don't mind that because sometimes I don't like with that. Like uh, uh, diversifying it myself more. Okay. Like what? Because you hit the each way, it's an automatic double up. Sometimes I don't want that much on it. Yeah. Okay. That's that, fair. So, right? Makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Or sometimes I'll do that. Then I'll go back in and add a little extra outright sprinkle Without the each way, because, you know, want more on that outright. Want more on that losing ticket. So I'm looking at it now. Shank is, is this Shank is another one that does right. intrigue me. Is this event shitty enough that you would consider Aaron Badley? No. No, Brooks is in this field. <laughs> okay. Well, we're almost <laughs> like there. Like, if, Ch if Chase Kepka was in this field, then maybe. Maybe Badley would have the look. 
I don't mind. I, I might be starting my card at Keith Mitchell, to be honest. Oh, so you're if I look at opportunities game, which is a fantasy national stat, it's a birdie opportunities from inside 15 feet. I think it's a better greens and regulation. Just shows the amount of like putts you can actually feasibly make to make birdie. Keith Mitchell is pretty good. Uh, Keith Mitchell's not bad. He's 16th. But over the past 24 rounds, Troy Merritt is the best. Russell Knox is second. Knox is like 66. I mean, Landry, Hideki, Shank, Stewart, Lovelady, Vaughn Taylor, Mullenix, Nah, The okay. Gim, The what, Gim Reaper. What is Knox in that? Palmer. How good is Knox in that crucial iron range, though? Because he's not going to hit it as far as the other guys you want to be betting. Uh, past 24 rounds, strokes gained approach, eighth. Russell Knox. He rates out third over the past 24 rounds in my modeling. 66 to one, Pat. See, I don't hate that. There's the, uh, those are the ranges and the power rank. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. A lot of, I was on that Knox Stewart team. You just hyped both of them up. They were both sticking it. They couldn't hit eight, seven foot putts though. Yeah. I mean, Stewart generally putts well. Knox, not the best putter on tour. And then, I don't know, that's sort of one of those events. Once you're not making birdies, you kind of like, you're you're just like done. Done. Steward. You got to make sure and make a note. Do not bet Chris Stroud, bet Brian Stewart. I would probably (laughs) need to make the same note because I had to triple check for the Zurich, which guy was which and who was with who. They, I also just assume they look alike too. I I really have no idea what either of them looks like. No, I think they do. I'm not 100% certain, but my perception has led me um, led me there. All right, quick picks for the week. I am going to go Stenson 25, Mitchell 35, Rafa 45, Mullenix 80, and Brian Stewart, whatever his number is. I think I said it was 125, something like that, 150 maybe. So those are the five that I will be on. And you can check out the cheat sheet on my Facebook page on Wednesday to find out if I add anyone else, all the first round leaders. What are you thinking? Rafa. Okay. Um, Knox. And the, the bets I have in are Rafa and Mullinex. Okay. Those are the bets I've made. I'm really thinking about Knox at 66. Oh, Knox. Yeah. Maybe I will get it on Knox too. And I don't mind. You could sell me on Hideki. Oh, uh, sorry, on, on Stenson. But I think I might rather Mitchell. I'm just going to bet them both. I think I might rather Mitchell. Okay. Just freaking hammering it out there. He seems to be on every time I watch him, he's putting for birdie. And these are Bermuda greens. He's back in his comfort zone. I know I kind of made a comment, like, like, I don't know, about guys that winning – Twice, but to me, he's, uh, I don't know. I think he's shown enough over the, since winning at Honda, uh, all the way through this Florida string, the Masters, even last week at Quail Hollow, like he's, he yeah. sh- shows up. And he's like the sixth or seventh best player in this field. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Yeah. I know you want to bet Gary Woodland at the PGA Championship. <sighs> Let's, Talk me out of it. Is Keith Mitchell better than Gary Woodland? Might be. You're going to get better odds. Could be. But it's on POA where Keith Mitchell cannot putt whatsoever. So I guess that's something to watch out for. One and dones. I do not know who Kest is taking as of yet. He took Jason Day last week. I won the week with Paul Casey. So you're going to go with Stenson. I can't remember if I've used... I feel like I used Stenson at Valspar for some reason. I really should have printed out a list. Uh, and I did I take Rafa at API? I don't think I did. I'll take Rafa. And if I didn't, I'll take Stenson because you're probably not going to take Stenson. And then if it gets down to that, I will lock myself into, if for whatever reason I don't have those two guys, uh, give me Trey Mullenix. Okay. That, that'll be my, my, my alternate. I'll take Mitchell. Kill Keith? Although this could have been a real good time maybe to use Hideki or Brooks, you could argue. Unless you're saving Brooks for a major. But it's still I've a used, million I've bucks. Brooks. Right, it's probably still a million one. Yeah, oh yeah. It's a hefty payday if you win it. Hideki might be interesting. I feel like very few people have Hideki left because everyone used him in Phoenix. You're even out of there. He was running hot for for a little Well, he was coming off Tory where he came like third. That was like his rebound. Remember when Stenson was like 70 to one six weeks ago at random events? What do you think he is next week? I don't know. I mean, I, I can look that up. 
What is he next week? Stenson is probably fifty to one. Why would he 60, be ahead of Sergio? He's yeah. sixty to one. Sergio's what forty, forty five. I trust the short game with Sergio more than Stenson. Stenson doesn't really have a short game. Yeah, you're gonna need it. You're gonna need. Like, this is not that. What? You're saying that this there's no is yeah, not the, like Beth Page. <laughs> the, there's Hot no scrambling page. this week. <laughs> there, yeah, there's there, there's very limited scrambling this week. Good, so Jordan Smith can't chip in from 80 yards because there's no oh, like oh, hosel. There's no hosel to be in. Yeah, but there's there's really short holes, so maybe he just chips in from the fairway from 60 yards out. So yeah, I said um, I said Mitchell. All right, we'll find out who Tim picks. So I guess that means I'm gonna bet Mitchell. Okay. So right now my betting card looks like Rafa Knox, Mitchell Mullinex. It's not a bad card. You'll throw Fratelli on there by by week's end. I have faith in you. Yeah, I've already seen 100 out there. So that's the number to take. Uh, but it doesn't have the each. Well, okay. You can, You've actually, we went through this. Yes. <laughs> Anything else? No, I'll just remember when we're done. When we're done, you'll, you'll tell it to me outside. Yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll Instagram live it so we can pick it up. No, I don't know. Next week's the, the PGA. So for that, like we're going to have regular Byron... DraftKings on Tuesday, the chat on Wednesday, the Super Show will be released. DraftKings wise, I've gathered up a whole bunch of people again. We're playing for a million bucks here. You got to get all the info you can get. That'll be out on Friday. You and I will be out on Monday. Um, I have to look into guests for Tuesday and guests for Wednesday, but we're going to have a full complement of major shows as people always seem to enjoy. So spread the word. Cut sweat next week. Cut, cut sweat live next week. What's Tiger's ownership? Because it was shockingly low. I actually made a fool out of myself. I, I don't know what the price is. is pricing is yet i made a fool out of myself with how low like i projected all like all those people that did the projections i thought their polling was sort of like people who um like how none of the polls had trump winning i said no one's admitting their bet they're playing tiger but everyone's gonna play him and then the, the percentages came out and people didn't really play him yeah i believe the millionaire maker winning lineup didn't have tiger on it so I looked, yeah, I like was on the hill of like, there's no way it'll be lower than, um, like but, I even what Gup said. I'm like, there's no way it'll I, be that low. I feel like and, that's, and I, that's out the window now. Oh, yeah he's, yeah, he's everything. But if he's the same price as Dustin, like, are you really going to click on Tiger? I won't. See, I don't think I will either. Now that Tiger has won his other major, I can now go back to devoting all my energy into the other guys getting more majors or their first. You're not rooting for Tiger Slam? I'm rooting for Tiger everything, but I always said like Tiger winning, Tiger getting like 15 was more important to me than like Ricky getting one. But now that like Tiger got 15, Ricky get one, Dustin get two, the natural order of life can get back into it. Luke List can win the PGA Championship. Siwoo winning the PGA Championship, get him out, get himself out of military service. I guess we didn't talk about Justin Thomas. You think that's actually an injury? I don't know. I have no idea. Or super precautionary. I'm just saying, for him to not play at the course that he won his major at... That, I, I think it's like, precautionary. Probably. We're going to get a good number on Justin Thomas, by the way. Like over 22? I could see it dropping to 20. If, like, this injury stuff really crops up. He's sort of out of sight, out of mind right now. Yeah. So, yeah, again, now, if he's the same price as Ricky, who are you betting? Ricky or Justin Thomas? I mean, you'll bet, Ricky, but what would a sensible person do? Well, someone has to balance out the universe. All right, that'll do it on the Pat Mayo Experience. Bad show. Uh, Jeff Feinberg. <laughs> Check him out on Twitter, at gfeinberg17. If you become a member of Fantasy National on Wednesday, you get the full, on the weekly membership, you get this week, you get next week. I suggest you do that if you're looking for some value. We had Cam in here last week. Can't just, can't replicate we may have to get Cam back in here. He's around, apparently. See, this is like the bad. See, like you have Cam in here. I followed up with a bad show. Yeah, people are going to demand Cam. I love Cam. Uh, I was thinking about the three of us, like for the PGA show, that we'd get Cam in and the three of us would do a show. I don't know if that's feasible. It might be. I, I just, I mean, in terms of how a show would work. Yeah, all, fitting all three of us at the desk would be tough. It's a big table. Yeah, but we ha also have to consider, like, you can't see the entire table in the shot. It was hard enough to get Cam and I both in the shot. Well, he's, yeah. So we'd sit him here. I, I just mean in terms of us talking about the stuff. 
Because Cam's like in a thousand different places at once. Maybe for the guy, if he wasn't doing the show next Friday, having him for the cut sweats would be pretty hilarious. You know, sir, like the first time I ever met Cam, like I was sitting at his desk as an intern. Really? Yes. So, um, yeah, I got there. Uh, Cam doesn't get until time X. So the boss, like the program director, just said, you can work there. So I worked there, did all things. I guess open like up my email Later that day, maybe a couple hours before Cam had to go on air, he comes, sits at my desk, and obviously I have, like, browsers open. He looks around and he's like, who the fuck is Gia Feinberg? <laughs> it's, like, my first day on the job. I'm like, oh, that's, like, me. I'm sorry, Cam. And he goes, you're a Gia I love Geoff. <laughs> Jeff Ogilvy just won me this and that and this. <laughs> And then yeah, we're friends. It would be I if we could figure out a way to get him in on one of those for the one of the live cut sweats, it would be definitely worth it. To do an actual structured show is a bit tougher. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. For sure. That makes sense. And you think like I'm probably bad during cut sweat? I think he'd be worse than me. I agree. I completely agree. Because you've seen us both like live in in the act. Well, the best part is Cam has a bet on everyone well, in the field. Yeah, at least like <laughs> so I. He's highly yeah. invested in everybody. <laughs> yeah, at least like me, like, oh, like Ricky or the guy I bet, like, you know, t- like I'll screw up and I'll like have my moment. But it's like him, sh- every everyone they show, he's got like somewhere. I, I remember when I, I sat next to him at Fantasy. He opened up the PGA, like, website. Like 40 guys starred? Well, yeah, when you have the guys starred. And, like, you he, think that's the actual leaderboard? There's I so thought, many I thought guys it was. on it. I, like, I was like, can't you have half the leaderboard starred? Like, what are you doing here? He's like, Mayo, if Moops comes through. Oh. That, that'd be Ryan Moore. Yes, that Who would I, be. I think Cam will probably bet this week. This week? Oh, yeah, Ryan Moore is playing. You, in like, an swore event. him off because he, like, wore a tie once, right? Yeah, I didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. I didn't like it when Justin Thomas did it either. You know, Cam's good. Or if you've been there, like, or if he's sitting at your, or later in life, where Cam has to use your computer. No, no one was able. I had a lock on my computer. Okay, fine. No well, one you, can come you, and you, use you, my you, computer. Your, you have special privileges. <laughs> okay? People, uh, so like, when you were downloading weird shit onto my computer, then I had to lock it from then on out. Me? Yeah, you were on some weird site downloading stuff. It's mucking up the works. Slowing down my editing system. I don't think I don't think I'm ever dumb enough to have downloaded something on your computer. You were. It's like the one argument we've ever had. I was very upset oh. you were using my computer. Like, was I taking like West Wing off your hard drive, or like I was like egregiously surfing the internet on your computer? You were, you were sur- searching some sites that were a bit off brand. I don't know if they were like virus inducing, but oh. I there are certain sites that I wouldn't go to. This must have been like early in our. Relationship. Oh, very, very, very okay. early. Because I don't think, yeah. I've seen you go at other people, and I knew right away I'd never want to be that person. When you put out the bulk of content that I, I was agree. putting yeah, out, yeah, yeah. and I was editing it and doing all the graphics, that computer needed to be as and clean as possible. I needed to know where every single megabyte was on I, that computer so okay. I could use it to the best of its ability. I would hope I just apologized. You did. And I admitted I was wrong. Then you said you wouldn't use it again, and you didn't. Forever. Going back... Later in life, life coming full circle, sort of like Tiger hugging Earl and then Tiger hugging Charlie. Later in life, Cam has to use my computer <laughs> at my desk. Um, so, like, he could leave his browsers open. Have you ever seen, like, his open betting sheet for a night? It's got about as many stars as are on the leaderboard. <laughs> he's, he's, like, he's all over it. <laughs> he's got to bet on everything. Every single sport, too. <laughs> over under ping pong sets from Norway. It's the best one. <laughs> I know. Just, just, just throwing your money oh, away. I love that guy. All right. So become a member at FantasyNational.com. If you play DraftKings, you play DFS, you want to bet on it, Fantasy National is the place where you're going to get all your resources, all the best tools. And if you subscribe on Wednesday, you know, Fantasy National right there. You get one of these cool hoodies. I like it. I think. I don't know if they're for sale yet. Might just give them away as prizes. I don't know. Very, very comfortable, though. I like the color, too. It matches my shoes. See? Boom. Leg day. Leg day. Yeah. I, I am wearing shorts or just very, very, very short <laughs> shorts. It's hot out. What do you what do you want me to do? I went out yesterday. Everyone was on the streets. It was Sunday. It was Sunday and it was like the, the first, first nice, nice day of the year. year. I don't know if we like did enough here to save the show. No, we didn't. Might have helped it like up a couple points. Smash the like button. <laughs> Leave your DraftKings handle. 
in the comment section, what was the giveaway? Favorite player above 50 to one? Just do that. You're in a draw for 20 DK bucks. Leave a nice review, preferably not of this show, just of the show in general on the iTunes page. Five stars, DraftKings handle, something nice. You're in a draw for 20 DK bucks. PGA Championship show will be better. We'll have great shows during the week. Last week, we had a whole bunch of good shows too, so we're kind of burnt out from it. But that will do it. I'm Pat Mayo. Check out all of my work on DKPlaybook.com. My article is up there now. And playing the Pat Mayo experience open. Fill that shit up so we can have a big one. For the PGA Championship, the link is in the description of this video and podcast. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!